them with money. Yes, we did. We did. That's another way to think about it. We did. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. Digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills. That actually increases the money supply. Financial turmoil explained. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on October 18th, 2022, a Tuesday. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to show you guys two charts here. The first one is the velocity of money. Now, what the velocity of money is, is you have a pool of money out there, what we call money. It's actually uh, currency units. You know, it's uh, your Federal Reserve notes. Okay, we call my dollars. Cash, it could be cash. There's a pool of it out there that people use on a daily basis. Or might be in your bank account, sitting in a bank. There's a pool of what we call money out there. And how fast does that money exchange hands from one person to another? How fast is it moving within the system? How, uh, you know, I mean, okay, going back years ago, I think my mother wrote something on a $5 bill. Well, this was back like 30 years ago. And she went out and she spent it. That $5 bill went around town all day. Probably exchanged hands 10 times. And then it come back to my mother before the day was over in, in change. She got it back in, in the change. She was uh, shopping at some other store or something. And she got the $5 bill back that she had marked. The velocity is how fast that money's moving within the system. How many times does that $5 bill change hands in, in a day? That's, that's the velocity. And so when you look at the whole pool of money, how fast is it all moving? Okay, so if you create a lot of money, say they create a whole big bunch of money and then they put it into a bank and they leave it sit there, the velocity is going to be very, very slow. But if the money is out there in the system being exchanged from one person to another, if, a, if they're giving it to a company and they're paying their employees and their employees are buying groceries with it and blah, 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 then the velocity is going to go up. So generally when there's less money in the system too, it can affect the overall velocity because the system has to operate on a certain amount of to make that's because that's what we call well what we call dollars what we call money is used as a means of exchange and as it moves through the system it reflects the velocity and there's less of it what little bit there is is going to have to be used more as a means of exchange in other words a higher velocity so, see, this is also an indicator of how much money is out there in the system. Less money or less liquidity. So we can use this as a tool to help us peer into the currency markets, help us peer into the system and say, if the velocity is going up, it's an indicator. Now, if we look at this indicator very closely, you know, and, and if we skip it along here toward the end, we can see it was falling. The velocity of money was falling, falling, falling. But if we look right here on the end, and I think you can start to see what I'm talking about right here. I'll move in a little bit closer. We move in right here on the end. What's happening now? Well, now the velocity is going up like a rocket. Right on the end, just in the last little bit. Okay, so what I said is less money in the system. A little bit less currency, then it's going to, the currency that is available is going to be used more as a means of exchange. So it's going to increase its velocity. But if we look simultaneously here at the Federal Reserve... You know, the same thing was happening. If we if we go back, look, it was going up, 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 up. Well, you can see it better if I go back a bit more, you know. I mean, look, look, the Federal Reserve, the amount of money they're pumping into the system was going up, 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 right? But if we look right at the end here, now it's going down, 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 down. Exact same pattern we see on the velocity of money. 
It's not coincidental, guys. So in other words, they were increasing the money supply, increasing it. The velocity was going down. That's because there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Only a small pool of money in the middle has to move around. So look at it like wheelbarrows full of money in a big circle. That they printed all those wheelbarrows full of money. And a little pool of money in the center that people are using to trade back and forth with. Which has a higher velocity. But because all that money sitting in the wheelbarrows in the big circle is so much money. That, that insists that the velocity is going to be really low. But now when all those wheelbarrows go empty of money. And the only money that's, in, that's being used is the money in the center of the circle. Then the velocity is going to increase because it's a smaller amount. And where does the money come from? It comes from the Fed. <laughs> it's Federal Reserve notes. And they're the ones who control the, how many is going to be out there in the system. See what they're doing? They're sucking them from the system right now. They're pulling them away. So the velocity is increasing. But you know the velocity of money is also tied to inflation. Very tightly. So what do we see? We see inflation increasing, and we also see the velocity of money starting to pick up and starting to go really fast to the high side. These are signals of two things. One, that there is supply-side shortages out there, which is obvious, which is driving it up to fuel inflation as shortages. And at the same time, incompetent governments out there who are not allowing the shortages to decrease by opening things up, they're, if anything, they're tightening everything up and they're, and they're going into war. And whenever they have things like sanctions and things like that, they're tightening things up, making things more difficult to move around within the system, causing the inflation to increase even more, you know? So we got an extraordinary situation here. These trends are now in, in, in unless this trend goes through a reversal right here, and it can to increase the liquidity in the system. Uh, we're looking at a crisis situation d developing right now. That's what we're looking at. With the velocity of money increasing, inflation increasing, the Fed on the other side saying, hey, you know what? We got to fight this. And so here's evidence of them fighting it, but they're only actually making the situation worse. It's coming to a conclusion very soon, guys, where what we're going to see is 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 a, a crisis situation developing the system from the lack of liquidity that I'm seeing evidence of here. Well, this is only part of the evidence that I'm looking at, but I see evidence for it within the system, and it's, it's going to manifest itself in, in, in a Lehman-style event very similar to what happened in 2008 very, very soon. Uh, they got to stop what they're doing. It's it's just absolute insanity. This actually withdrawing all this liquidity because see, it was this mountain that we climbed. If if we go back on here and just take a look real quick right here, see this mountain that we climbed. This is what supported the system. This is what brought the system back from uh. From the, the 2008 crisis. If we go back even further, we see it's even it's even more, more so. Uh, let me uh, see. Let's go back, way back. You know, I mean, it's just like 2008, you know, and it, it, it was just like, boom, off to the races right here at 2008. And what we've seen ever since, and pushing it up, 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 up. Now, there was a little bit, a little period where they did quantitative tightening, and then it, it failed. Totally failed. Now, do you think it's not going to fail again? They're at it again. In fact, if we look at the point of failure on, on the last couple times they've tried it, things like this, uh, if we check this one out, we're right, right down on the point of failure right here. That's about how far they get before they have to pump this back up again. Anyway, guys, let's take a look at the price of silver today. 1873. It's up eight cents. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Gold is 1649. It's uh, it's up. Oh, what is that? 40 cents. 
Cryptocurrency today. What we're looking at is a Bitcoin price of 19505 and Ethereum is 1316 And Take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It says we're up 455 points at 30641 Yeah, I just have to wait for it. Because until the Fed stops raising rates and until they stop draining that liquidity out, that's the big one right there as far as I'm concerned. $95 billion a month. It's going to be adding up because what it happens is is, is, it's, is it, it each month keeps adding to the month before. And it, it, this ain't going to last too much longer. They're not going to get very much further. Do you think they can put the three... The nine trillion dollars in that's brought the system up to where it is, and then they can drain all that out, and nothing's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you. So, so we're going to see these markets start to roll back down again. Uh, but I'm saying twenty six thousand, or probably twenty five, twenty six thousand is probably probably the floor, because that's when we're going to have crises start to occur. Is is when it starts to get down in the, that range. And then they're going to have to stop to fix the crises. See, they're not going to stop until they cause the crisis. And then when they cause the crisis, then they're going to have to fix it. And that's just going to cost money all the way around. That's, I think, the plan. You know, it's just they have to have a reason to do what they do, which is start the printers up. Anyway, <laughs> it's all like a big game, to tell you the truth. Uh, taking a look at crude oil today, 83.66 is down to dollar 80 on the day. Uh, let's take a look at the move index, 150.42. So move index has been holding pretty much in around 150 the last number of days, which is, my my opinion, incredibly high. Let's take a look now at uh, bonds and rates, and we're seeing the uh, bond yield is kind of a little bit of a mixed bag, but we're seeing the U.S. 10-year at 3.99, so it's right on, roughly right on 4%, and the U.S. 30-year at 4.03%. And we're going to take a look at the dollar index today. It's 112.09 on the day so far. Those two charts are, are really interlocked in together somewhat that I showed you initially at the start of this show. And uh, as we see the, uh, the, the amount of money decrease in the system, of course we're going to see the velocity go up, but also the velocity goes up and people start spending more when we're on the verge of a, uh, a, uh, of them not trusting the, the fiat currencies any longer. People start to say, I'm not keeping my money in the bank anymore. And they pull it out and they spend it. And then the velocity increases. So there's that factor too we got to think about. So we see the velocity of money going up. That That is a signal for inflation as well. So thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.